Uh, so let's move to the last presentation. And in this case, uh, Christian Trimmerer. So he's going to talk about uh, the distributed DAS uh, data set. OK. Floor is yours. Thank you, Pablo. And welcome to my talk about the distributed DASH data set, which is actually a joint work between uh, some people, Stefan, Christopher, and myself from Alp Madre University, Klagenfurt, and then from Cyril and Jean from Telecom Paris Tech. And Cyril is giving a, a demo later on, on on some DASH work as well. And Karel from uh, Czech Technical University in Prague. Uh, so what is DASH? I guess many people of you know what DASH means, but still, if you're new to MMSYS, and you're not familiar with this kind of acronym, so you might go to Wikipedia, or go for dash disambiguation and see there's a lot of <laughs> things related to dash, but actually we mean technology, right? So <laughs> and it stands for Dynamic Adaptive Streaming over HTTP, a multimedia streaming standard. Uh, so you heard a lot of presentations already about dash and dash related work. Uh, also just right now in this session, and also yesterday there was a, a, a uh, paper on Dash-like services in a nutshell. So what you do, you have a, a long video, you cut it into pieces, you provide different versions of it. Uh, the pieces usually of equal, uh, equal length, about two seconds or 10 seconds. Uh, you put this kind of relationship between the qualities and the timeline into a manifest file, which is called media presentation description. Uh, you bring it forward to a client. Uh, you can send it by email, SMS, or the client downloads it through uh, HTTP. It, it's, not, uh, it's not so much important how that happens. That's quite flexible. And uh, the, the client then decides based on the available bandwidth, uh, which is uh, the open internet. It's not managed. It's Okay, uh, so last year at, uh, well, MMSYS has this data set track. There are other initiatives, for example, Qualinet, they have a database on, on data sets as well. Uh, and there is a strong collaboration between uh, the two parties. So, but why have it distributed? Because Dash and uh, Ali Peng yesterday presented that already, or mentioned that, allows to pull segments from multiple sources, from multiple sites. Yeah, and that is typically signaled in uh, in this media presentation description, MPD, by using multiple base URL elements. And the MPD is an XML document, as we will see later some examples. And by having it distributed, I mean uh, distributed across different sites, and in fact, as you will see, we have it in, in, in Klagenfurt, in Paris, and in Prague. Uh, it allows for a real-world evaluation of Dash clients that perform the bitstream switching, not only with respect to one single source, but to multiple sources between multiple sites. And that might be used to simulate switches between multiple content uh, distribution networks. Uh, and additionally, if you want to be part of this data set, uh, you, we provide a mechanism to mirror this Dash content to further sites. So you're invited to join this activity and also to get involved and excited about Dash. How does it work within Dash to have multiple base URLs? Well, first, you, the base URL is, gives basically the indication on where to download uh, the segment. In fact, it's an optional element. It can be present multiple times and at multiple levels in the XML hierarchy of the MPD. And it has some optional attributes like service location and byte range. Service location provides some kind of grouping where you could somehow signal that, OK, a group of servers belong to one CDN, another group belong to another CDN, and so on. 
And here you have two examples uh, showing on how it could look like. And here you also can see an MPD that has just here one period with different ad adaptation sets and different representations with some certain characteristics. And then you have a segment list that has that can be uh, retrieved from different servers or you could even have a hierarchy which is then resolved against the main base URL, if you want to call it. If this base URL is not present and you have only uh, relative URLs, uh, the, the URLs are resolved uh, against the source where from where you got the MPD, if you, for example, have downloaded it from, from uh, an HTTP server. Okay, so the main repository is uh, available. Uh, at our Dash website, which is probably known uh, to, to some people of you. We have just used one out of our existing test sequences, which is a one hour, uh, 70, uh, 37 minute, 28 second sequence. We provided different segment lengths because that is somehow not defined or specified in the standard. Uh, some existing proprietary solutions, they use two seconds, others use 10, so we provided some uh, segment lengths in between for your evaluations. We had different video and different audio representation ranging from different uh, bit rates and different resolutions and also for the audio we had different bit rates at a 48 uh, kilohertz sampling rate. And the sites, as you can see, it's in Klagenfurt. We have one at Telecom Paris Tech and one at the Czech Technical University in Prague. And they are both active and you can access it from one MPD. You can switch on the segment boundary uh, from Klagenfurt to Paris to Prague and as you want, it's up to you, okay? And further, we provide some uh, means on how to, to add your own site. So you can just create a mirror, uh, install a cron shop on your server, uh, mirror the data set, register the data set, we will check it, whatever, whether everything uh, is, is right, is okay with that, and then we put it on our registration site, and then you're part of the distributed Dash data set. And we are, would like to welcome especially people from outside of Europe to be part of the data set, uh, which would make the testing and the evaluation much more uh, nicer. Uh, the update process, I skipped that, I put that slides on, you, you can read that later to come to something uh, which is probably uh, or should generate some kind of discussion. Well, so what can you actually do with this data set? Well, hopefully work on a paper. <laughs> the next chance is already next week, so you can work fast on a paper and submit something by March 6. A uh, full paper for QMAX if you want to do some QE evaluations, for example, or a short paper, which is the deadline March 20, or you have the JSEC special issue April 1st, packet video we heard yesterday, or even MMSUS next year, where the deadline is uh, in September. But on which problems you can work? The first of all is uh, when you have been with fluctuations during a dash, a dash session, uh, you might switch to another base URL. But if you decide to, to do so, to which one you switch? You might use the service location attribute to choose a different group because you might assume that, okay, with one group you have a problem, you switch to another one. Or it might be just a temporary issue of your uh, connection in the access network, so you might switch to another representation within the same base URL. That's again a problem you have to solve. A completely other problem is live streaming, so which is not so really supported by this data set, but uh, for live streaming you can uh, see the demo from, from Cyril uh, in the next session. He will show something on, on live streaming. Or you may even use the, the other data set uh, from, the, from the local guys here, from the bandwidth traces to simulate bandwidth traces with this data set or with our other data set. So coming to an end now, one of, one of the major critical issues for DASH implementations is, of course, this kind of bandwidth estimation for the segments. And here especially, if you have multiple base URLs and you want to do that in parallel, and you want to have a low startup delay and a smooth streaming, which means no stalls, no rebuffering, because these are the two major QE metrics you need to take care of. Our distributed DASH dataset allows for a real-world evaluation of DASH clients because uh, we have put it on real servers across Europe that perform switching between multiple sites. 
So you can do that. We have the current sites Klagenfurt, Paris, Prague, and it can be easily distributed further, for example, outside of Europe, and uh, everyone is welcome to join. Again, to get involved and excited about Dash, and probably submit something for the JSEC special issue. Thank you for your attention, and if there are any questions, I'm happy to answer. Just, just keep it, I think, before the Thank you very much. Very, very interesting. Do we have questions? Comments? Yes. Uh, I think you can make a question. If you can repeat the question, then we get the uh, recorder and everything. I think that's really good. We don't have any more microphone, right? Yeah. I can repeat. So the question was now on the on the MPD, how that looks like, uh, also with respect to the segment sizes. So uh, yes, the MPD is a static file, and you have more or less now three base URLs inside, and we have different versions for different segment sizes. So we have one MPD that uh, has uh, two segment segment uh, two second segment sizes, and then four, six, ten, fifteen, and so on. Yes, it depends on, so the question was whether we have a, whether we, it's possible to have a dynamic uh, MPD. Yeah, you can construct the MPD dynamically. Uh, in fact, there is another version we provide which doesn't have the segment list but has the, the segment template. So you have a very small MPD and you have a template inside that gives you uh, instruction how the MPD is constructed at the client side so that you don't have to submit a very huge XML document to the client, so you have a small one uh, which can be transmitted. But of course, the server can always also provide a, a dynamic MPD, but this is not uh, done here. Sure, I mean, the other problem is to have, uh, the other possibility is to have one MPD with all the different uh, segment sizes, but that is then probably becoming very, very huge. Uh, so the question is, do have what, what is possible to have uh, dynamic segment sizes? Yeah, the standard permits it, so the standard allows for it. But then it becomes a little bit tricky to switch between uh, the segments because you have to take care about the segment sizes itself. The idea is, if, if you if you want to have a constant segment size, you can switch very easily at the segment boundaries. If you're not having having that, you probably get into time alignment problems. <laughs> 